Good morning! It is Thursday, and Thursday means the plant of the week, uh, typically, and uh, today's plant of the week is very special. I would say it's probably even like the plant of the year, or like even the plant of the last couple of years. Um, we are going to be talking about the California native milkweed uh, for the monarch butterflies. Uh, I am Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and I'm so excited to bring to you the plant of the week uh, because this is a really, really amazing one. Uh, it's really fun that I get to always do this with you. So I always get to talk about the fun, exciting stuff that we have here at Rogers. Um, and not only do we finally have the California native uh, milkweed, which is this plant here, all these things are companion plants that I brought to show you um, are some of my favorite things. But this is the California um, native narrow leaf milkweed. There are a couple of milkweeds that are native here to California. Uh, this particular one, uh, the uh, botanical name is Asclepsia fasciculars. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, there is a lot of different kinds of asclepsia. Uh, but this is the one that's really good for our region. If you think about California, we are one of the craziest, most diverse states when it comes to uh, desert, uh, lakes, uh, rivers, high mountain, high desert, like all different kinds of stuff, right? Snow and everything in between beaches. Um, so uh, this variety is really good here for Southern California in this area here. So from San Diego down to Mexico, uh, up to about San Francisco, uh, this is a really, really great one to have um, in your garden for the monarchs. So um, what's really, really cool about this, not only just having this plant uh, here, uh, we know that these plants are untreated. Uh, we have a really amazing um, uh, program that we do with a nursery that's growing these for us. So it's kind of an exclusive thing that we do with them that they do specifically just for us. Uh, but they grow the California native milkweed and they're untreated, which is really, really important. So you want to make sure not only do you have the right milkweed, but that you have a milkweed that's untreated. And you cannot look at a milkweed and tell if it's been treated or not. It's just impossible. Uh, so uh, what's really, really nice is that this is a milkweed uh, that we have grown exclusively for us um, through this company that we know they don't treat them, which is really, really important. So uh, the best part about it is we're doing an exchange program, which is really, really fantastic, really amazing. Uh, a lot of people have been growing milkweed for a very long time, me included, uh, and growing the tropical milkweed, which we now know is an issue because it uh, harbors this protozoan that's actually a parasitic animal, uh, a little bug. Uh, they call it the OE. I actually used to know the scientific name for this, but I already forgot what it is. Um, but uh, what it does is it grows on and lives on the milkweed and specifically the tropical milkweed where it gets really bad because it doesn't go totally dormant. So this plant goes totally dormant. So it dies all the way down to nothing and then grows back. So that happens in the fall, winter time, and then it grows back again in the springtime. So you start seeing it pop up around February-ish. Uh, typically just depends on how um, old the plant is and how established the plant is when it actually comes back. Um, but that protozoa does not harbor and live on this to such a crazy degree that it becomes a problem for the monarchs. Uh, so what happens is on the tropical one is they, they lay their eggs on it, the caterpillar eats it, the protozoan gets in their body, uh, they make their chrysalis. Sometimes the chrysalis doesn't open, so if you've ever seen a chrysalis that goes black or goes uh, funny or they hatch out of it kind of deformed sometime a wing will be messed up or they'll be very weak and they don't fly away uh, as quickly as a healthy one will um, you know that it's been infected with a protozoan even if you have the native milkweed only at your house and you've done a really good job and you've done your research and your due diligence you've taken out all the tropical and you've replaced it all with the native you might still find that some of your caterpillars uh, will do the same thing that is because uh, that mama that laid the egg mated with one that had the protozoan in it. So they will transfer it back and forth to each other when they mate as well. So uh, the hope is that eventually we get rid of the tropical altogether. Everybody comes into an understanding that this is the wrong one to have uh, and we don't have that problem anymore. But more and more people are getting really savvy to this and the way we're helping here at Rogers Gardens is by giving you a free one. So if you have the tropical at home and you're going, uh-oh, 
I have the tropical and the way you know is that the flower on it is yellow or orange or red or crazy hot pink. They're very um, beautiful colors. I used to grow the orange one because it worked really well in my garden, um, but it's the wrong one. And the way you also know it's the wrong one is that it's up year round. It doesn't totally die down. Um, all of the California native ones are very pale kind of pink, cream color, uh, a little bit of white, a little bit of a blush sometimes when they first open. Um, so you know if it's not those colors and it, yours does not die down uh, for a good three months at least, uh, that it's the wrong variety uh, that you have in your yard. And if you're sitting at home going, uh-oh, I have the wrong one, go outside, dig it up, bring it in a trash bag, and we'll give you a free one. So we'll help you get started with your replacement, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we've done this for quite a few years now. Uh, I think it's a really amazing program. I am super proud to work for a company that is so interested in trying to help everybody and not just now you gotta buy something all brand new, but we'll actually give you something free to get you started on that. I think it's really, really amazing uh, that we do this and it makes me really happy that I work for the company that has decided to not sell the tropical at all, uh, despite the fact that it is a much prettier plant and a lot of people want that because it matches their garden, just like I did. I did the orange ones for a really long time. Um, but when we found out that it was an issue, uh, we took it all out and we replaced it with all of the native. Uh, the native um, is a little spindly. The flower is not super duper pretty, but but um, the flower is not necessarily what the butterflies are going for when it comes to this. This is what they lay their babies on. So they lay the eggs on, the caterpillars hatch. I was trying to find one with a caterpillar. Whenever um, we get a caterpillar that's noticeable, it gets bought up right away. <laughs> um, so I was trying to find one with a caterpillar this morning and I couldn't find one uh, yet, but I do see the mamas flying around and glitting around and laying their eggs there. Uh, they're really starting to come out. I probably saw about four yesterday. Um, but yeah, uh, I kind of hide it with other plants. So uh, I use the plants that the mamas want for the nectar to attract them for that. So they're coming to eat and then they go, oh, look, there's milkweed right there. I'm gonna lay my baby on there. So uh, it's always nice to do some companion planting. Um, where I have my milkweed now, I've switched over into an area where I have all my kind of really pretty pastels. So I brought you kind of in a selection of my favorite and we can kind of go into that a little bit. Uh, but I just wanna let you know, while supplies still last, because we do sell out of this sometimes, um, you can come in and get a free one, uh, which is really, really amazing. So you want to dig up yours, roots and all, uh, put it in a trash bag, um, and then bring it into the store and we'll give you a free one. Um, I tell everybody to put it in a bag and then wash your hands because you can still get the protozoan on your hands and you don't want to have that on your hands while you're coming in and picking out your new fresh one, uh, and transferring it over to that. So, uh, try to get it all the way in that bag, tie it off, wash your hands, uh, and then come in and get your free one, which is really, really cool. So I'm really happy that we're doing this. Uh, it's really amazing. We have all kinds of videos. So if you have any more questions or you just want to kind of know a little bit more about it, uh, we have all kinds of videos on our YouTube page. Uh, we always archive our, archive our stuff onto our Instagram um, and onto our Facebook page too. So we've done tons and tons of videos. I know I've got a lot. Suzanne's got a lot. I think uh, I'm sure Ron's got some videos on there. Uh, James who does with all the natives. Uh, the natives are a little tricky because they're a little different to grow. Um, I plant these around the the stuff that I have that's really drought tolerant um, because it doesn't want a lot of water. Uh, so I plant it in between my roses and my dahlias because I slow down on those on watering when uh, they're dormant and they're going dormant around the same time that this is going dormant, which is really cool. Uh, so I plant it in between those and then I plant it between all of my other kind of low water requirement stuff and with other natives as well. So I have an area where I have some native bulbs and stuff like that. So I have it planted there too. So it's kind of all over my yard now. This one does not make the seed, uh, the big fluffy, fluffy seed that goes all over the place and uh, gets into your neighbor's yard and gets into schoolyards and parks nearby and the medians and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it does grow by rhizome. So when you're picking one, uh, they are all pretty small, but when you're picking one, what you're looking for is if you see more plants that pop up away from the center crown, you know that there's a really healthy one. So I picked this one specifically because this is a really good, healthy, very established one. Also, if you can feel down in there, you can feel the old stems from last year, that's a very good thing too. So I can feel the old woody stems in here from last year. Uh, so I'm always picking plants like that uh, versus like a tall couple of spindly ones. Um, I always want more in there when I'm picking. So that's the way to pick a really good one. Um, some of the companion plants that I have nearby for um, nectar plants for the butterflies, um, the way that you can pick 
a nectar plant, even if you're not totally sure, you can even kind of look at the plants and tell if it's the right plant for a butterfly. Typically, it's a nice landing spot where they can land on there and there's multiple little flowers on there that they can drink the nectar out of. So if you look at all these plants, they are all the same way. There's multiple tiny uh, little open individual flowers inside here. here. Um, this one is Pentis. Uh, Pentis is beautiful. The hummingbirds love this one too, which is really cool. Uh, so they are all coming to it, but the butterflies go for it. Pentis comes in a range of colors. Uh, this is kind of my color palette for one of the areas that I have that's all mostly just uh, pollinator plants, uh, specifically nectar plants, mostly for hummingbirds and butterflies. Um, but uh, this comes in white. It comes in like a hot kind of fuchsia red-ish color, um, comes in kind of a really pretty um, lavender sort of color too. Um, the scabiosa, I brought some stuff that I'm excited about too because scabiosa is great. I love scabiosa. What's really cool is this makes a really good cut flower. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you know I love to cut flowers and bring them inside and make arrangements with them. Uh, but look at this one. This is a new scabiosa that we got in that's super pretty. It's so beautiful. The color is so great. There's like true blue in this and the stems are are really really nice and long um, which is fantastic and I cut some of these and use them in my um, Easter arrangement this year and it was just such a hit it was so pretty and everybody kept going what's that flower but the color is so pretty I love it uh, so this new variety and I'm not even sure the name of it because we just got this one in fama fama scabiosa fama so pretty um, also I'm in love and i just planted this one this week uh this is yarrow and it's called crazy little thing i think the name is so funny but i love this color it's very different it's very mauvey um i love the white yarrow the sonoma coast i tend to go for the more green uh leaf yarrows i think they're all pretty but i really like the green leaf ferny kind of ones because when the flowers die down and you cut them down it looks like a nice kind of little ferny ground cover um however uh there's lots of yarrows that are native so they don't need a lot of water so it's a great companion plant with the milkweed uh, which works really well so I have them next to each other uh, but I love this new one called crazy little thing it's just so pretty the color is so great um, and then of course bud Leia. so this is butterfly bush butterfly bush comes in a lot of different colors too but I love the gray white combo I think it's so beautiful uh, but Leia smells like heaven it's so fantastic uh, this is a dwarf hybrid too some bud Leia's, if you've grown them can get really really tall and then there's some tiny little ones that we call microchips so there's like a whole range in between of all the different kinds uh, but butterfly bush bud Leia is so fantastic and I just love this white uh, gray coloration white and gray are such classic colors together uh, and fits in so well with just about anything so I think this combination looks so pretty and I like to do that around uh, my milkweed because the milkweed is tall and kind of lanky and kind of floppy and it's not really exciting looking um, I actually had to tell I do have even though I garden a lot I do have a gardener who comes in who does my hedges and stuff for me and I had to tell him don't pull any of those <laughs> he knows me very well so he doesn't do too much uh, in my garden other than the stuff that I need extra help with that I can't get to myself uh, but I had to make sure that they knew not to pull any of those because uh, it's a little kind of scraggly looking doesn't look like anything specific especially when it's not flowering once it's flowering you can kind of tell that something special but um, what's really really great is I planted this for the first time I think it was three years ago uh, and it's really filling in a lot and I am actually able to dig some of them out and share them with neighbors and put them in little pots they like really sandy soil so I usually if I'm gonna pot it up and kind of get it established before I give it away I use the cactus mix uh, so I kind of almost do my own free exchange program in my neighborhood for all of my neighbors because I'm trying to make sure everybody really knows that this is something really important so if you know somebody who's growing the wrong colors um, I even stop and talk to people in my neighborhood uh, when I see them outside and I notice that they have the wrong color let them know that they can come in here and exchange it for a brand new free um, native milkweed so it's the right variety uh, so we're doing the right thing and we're making sure that we're helping out those monarchs uh, and getting those numbers increased uh, which is really important because uh, they've definitely been dwindling over the last handful dozens of years uh, so we're really trying to make sure that we're turning the tide on that and that everybody's doing the right thing for them
Um, putting out little plates of water too is really great too. They do like to have the water. I have some low uh, running fountains that have like a dish on top and I'll see the butterflies flinting around that or even just low plates or saucers uh, with a little bit of rocks in there so they have some place to land. Uh, but that definitely is good for them too because they're always looking for that water source. And if you've got all these things, you've got a super healthy uh, monarch buffet in your yard, which is really fantastic. Uh, and it's beautiful too. Thankfully, butterflies and hummingbirds and all the pollinators like pretty stuff just like us. So <laughs> you can have a really beautiful garden, uh, but also know that you have a garden uh, that's really doing well for all uh, the stuff in our area that we've kind of pushed out because of all the construction and stuff that we've done and everybody put in grass and they put in hedges and that's all they did. So having extra stuff in there uh, to help bring that population back in. And it's nothing better than going out in the morning and seeing those lazy little monarch mamas flying around on the wind. It's just so beautiful to watch them. Uh, they definitely have kind of a, a floaty, ethereal sort of vibe to them, uh, which is really amazing. And I love going out there in the morning and watching them when they're starting to lay their eggs too. It's really kind of fun uh, to see. So of course we are live and we can answer any questions for you, um, but make sure you get in here ASAP because you don't want uh, supplies to run out because especially now that everybody knows who's watching this, everybody's going to come in and get their free milkweed. Uh, so make sure that you tag your friends down below, you get in as soon as possible, bring those in, uh, roots and all, put them in a bag, wash your hands and come in here and get a freebie uh, on the house from us here at Rogers Garden. So and I'll answer any questions we have down below. If you came into this a little bit later, um, and you're not watching this live, you can still put your questions down there uh, and we will answer those uh, for you as we go along. And go check out our YouTube page. I'm telling you, wealth of knowledge, free knowledge there. Uh, just so much great stuff. We've got all kinds of videos. So if you've got a question, I swear to you, we have an answer uh, over there on our YouTube page as well. So let's get into it. Do we have any questions? Yes, the first question is, what do you mean by untreated when they grow them? Okay, plants? yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so um, when growing growers are growing their plants, a lot of times they will spray their plants, um, especially if they're out in the open, uh, to keep the bugs and things off of them. Uh, nurseries don't want to buy a plant that's covered in bugs, covered in aphids, and that is something that the milkweed can get, and we'll get into that in a second, um, or something that has been eaten down to the ground by a caterpillar. Uh, you know, a lot of places don't really understand uh, exactly quite yet, and the tide is truly turning on this, and I'm so happy about this, uh, but a lot of nurseries are afraid to sell something that's too small or something that has been eaten down by a caterpillar, not fully realizing how amazing that is. We have people who come in specifically looking at our milkweed and looking for the caterpillars. And the way you can find it is by looking for the one that's just little nubbins. A lot of people are gonna be coming in and looking for that because uh, there's already monarchs on there. So what they do is they wind up spraying them. Uh, there is a spray called BT spray that uh, only affects caterpillars. Uh, so when someone is doing a veggie garden or something like that and they're getting uh, little like looper white cabbage caterpillars or something like that something that's not uh, a, a caterpillar that we want to encourage um, I always tell people spray it with BT because it only affects the caterpillar so when the caterpillar eats it it's something that dries on the plant the caterpillar eats it and then the caterpillar dies it doesn't make a chrysalis it'll turn black it'll fall off um, so it's a bacterial thing it doesn't affect the um, bees it doesn't affect any of the ladybugs or anything like that uh, but what is happening is people will grow the narrow leaf milkweed and because they don't want it to get eaten down, they'll spray it with BT spray, which is just totally kind of insane when you think about it because that's killing the thing we're trying to encourage, right? So a lot of nurseries that are now realizing there's a demand for the narrow leaf milkweed are starting to treat their milkweed because they don't want to have to sell a nursery something that's too small or something that's eaten down. Uh, so you want to make sure that your milkweed is untreated and there's honestly no way to look at a milkweed and really tell. Uh, so what I think is really amazing here at Rogers is that we have a partnership with the people who are growing this. Uh, they know what we're trying to do. Um, we actually even have, um, I brought over one of these to show you too, and I kind of forgot about it, but um, we're actually doing a donation um, to the um, Xerces Society. So they're a monarch conservation group. 
Um, so it's uh, a totally nonprofit thing that the money goes straight to them. Uh, we don't keep any of it, but if you give one of these cards to someone at the cashier, you'll get a little beautiful wooden butterfly like this. Uh, you can write, and it's something we have made for us, and Suzanne just did a video on this, so you can watch the video uh, from Tuesday. But you can write a little wish. We have our monarch wishing tree, um, and the money goes straight to them. So um, we're working really hard to um, make sure that we are doing it exactly in the right way. So you want to make sure that they're not sprayed. Um, I met somebody very recently um, at one of our talks that we had here at Rogers, because we are doing talks on Saturdays and Sundays all through spring. Um, for uh, So this one is going to be Earth Day coming up, which is really exciting. Uh, so we're going to be talking about all kinds of cool things and live here. So you can come in and actually see me so I actually stand here and talk to any of the group that comes up um, but um, I had someone at one of my monarch talks who said she um, her milk we got eaten down so quickly uh, she kind of got worried she went out to a different store bought a narrow leaf milkweed but actually had a sticker on it that said wait two weeks and she didn't realize what that meant she planted it uh the caterpillars ate it and the caterpillars died because it had been treated um so even two weeks is not necessarily enough so if you see one somewhere else that has that sticker on there i would really be careful because how long does it take for that to really completely get out of the system it's not something you can rinse down it's not something you can wash off uh it's something that's going to have to uh slowly dissipate off of the plant over time so i would even be hesitant to even wait two weeks uh, to plant something like that so our plants are not treated you do not have to worry about that so that being said you will come in and you will find plants that are tiny little nubs because they've been eaten down which is fine because really you're worried about having roots you want to have that root system right these are plants that die down all the way anyways uh, so you want to make sure you have nice healthy roots and those roots are going to start making rhizomes which will make new plants all the way around it um, also too what you'll see often on um, the milkweed and ours look really good i didn't find any with it but uh you'll see an orange aphid so that will um usually kind of the grouping will congregate around the top because they want to suck out um all the sugars that the plants make while they're photosynthesizing and around the top it's very very soft so they're able to tap into it easily um and you will see that there'll be like a cluster of little orange dots all over it. And those are the aphids. Uh, so they don't even spray or treat for the aphids. Uh, some places will say, okay, yeah, we're not going to use a BT spray, but they'll still treat for the aphids. They'll use like an oil or soap or something like that. And uh, that's a slippery slope too, because uh, those things can affect very small, soft bodied bugs. The way the oils work is it suffocates them. Uh, the way the soaps work, it, it dissolves them. Um, so if there are tiny little caterpillars, colors on there, if there's tiny little eggs on there, that can affect them too. Uh, those things do dissipate very quickly, um, unlike the BT, uh, but even like at home when I get aphids on mine, I will spray them with a little bit of water. I'll usually use just a spray bottle with water mixed into it. Um, sometimes I'll even use like a paintbrush or a Q-tip uh, uh, to wipe them off. Uh, it's not really a big problem. They don't transfer to any of the other plants, which is kind of cool, um, but it's unsightly and it definitely weakens the plant a little over time so uh, keeping those in check is important so if I do see them I kind of just wipe them off and take them off but I'm constantly inspecting my milkweed like every other day because I'm always just looking um for those little tiny baby caterpillars or for the tiny little telltale um, of the little eggs, which I don't see any eggs on this one either. I was kind of trying to look and see if I could see any eggs, but uh, they're usually on the underside of the leaf, not on the stem, uh, and they're kind of a whitish cream color, not that orange color. So that's what I mean by untreated. You wanna make sure uh, that they're not sprayed, uh, that you're not feeding uh, your brand new little baby monarch caterpillars BT, because it will kill them, um, and that they're not uh, sprayed or treated with something um, for the aphids even too. So um, just water your hands, Q-tips, paintbrushes, toothbrushes, whatever you can find <laughs> to get those off uh, is totally fine. Sometimes I use my fingers, but I'm not very queasy with stuff like that. So uh, I'm sure most people would not do that. I do though. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, two part question. Okay. First question is, does what color is the wrong 
colored milkweed. Okay. And then going off of that, the tropical milkweed, does it grow underground? Like okay, so uh, the wrong colored milkweed is anything that's going to be orange, yellow, red, sometimes a combination of the all those colors together, very similar in a way to like um, what the lantana uh, flowers will look like when you get those three colors in there. Um, anything solid orange, solid yellow, uh, any combination of that. Even sometimes you'll see like a super hot pink color. Um, the native, uh, whether it's narrow leaf, broad leaf, there's a broad showy one, uh, is always going to be cream, white creams to like a very pale pink. It's never going to be a super bright showy pink um, honestly it's gonna look more like a weed <laughs> when you think about the name uh, but it will definitely be a little scrawnier uh, a little bit like uh, wild looking it is a wild plant right so that's how you know the difference between the two so if it's red yellow orange hot pink take it out it's the wrong thing and yes you want to get all the roots out of the ground um, they don't run from rhizomes as much as the um, native one does uh, they're are more spread by seeds when they go to seeds those seeds heads pop uh, it's kind of like a cottony kind of it's actually very pretty and it flows around and floats around and then gets into everything else and then reseeds everywhere uh, I go to a lot of parks and as I walk through the parks I see it uh, reseeded everywhere and I pull them out I used to cut them down and now I just pull them out I'm like forget it I'm gonna get rid of this um, but uh, so that's how you know so you want to get as much of the roots out as you can uh, for sure so don't just like cut it down but get the roots out too because the protozoan can live on the roots too and it will definitely come back uh, there for a long time people were like well I'm just gonna cut my native one or my tropical one down um, and then that way I'm kind of faking a dormancy uh, but that doesn't work because they'll keep growing back uh, and then also so too it becomes really hard for people is when they go in the fall to cut something down and they see all the little baby caterpillars on there and they see the little eggs on there they're hesitant to do it so they wait and then waiting is just again it's a slippery slope like when is there not going to be some activity there should not be any activity the caterpillars should not be uh, laid at that point there should not be any caterpillars or eggs on your plants at that point too so this is just gonna do the cycle the way it's supposed to do the cycle and you don't have to worry about recreating that cycle or feeling guilty about throwing away you know milkweed with like little baby beautiful caterpillars on there when it's you know almost thanksgiving which you should not be seeing but when you have the tropical that's what happens so take all the roots out take as much out as you can um, when you see little babies popping up uh, take them out uh, when you bring one in take roots and everything out um, and then if it's red yellow orange hot pink any kind of bright fire color if it's a fiery color it's the wrong one uh, then you know it's a tropical for sure cool so uh thank you so much for tuning in it's always so much fun to talk to you about something like this uh, i always love that i get to do the new exciting plant i always feel uh, very grateful that i get to introduce that to you all uh, like i said we are doing really awesome programs for our spring opening here uh, every single weekend we're having talks we have four talks on saturday and on sunday uh, i'm going to be talking about all kinds of things we'll be talking about uh, growing your own fruits and vegetables uh, we'll be talking about composting water um, we'll talk about California natives, all kinds of amazing stuff. So you'll see me, uh, you'll see James, and you'll see David this weekend. So come in and watch us. It's really, really fun, and we get to interact with you and answer questions with you. Uh, it's just been really, really exciting because I love to actually see all of your faces when I'm talking, uh, see all the reactions, and actually answer questions one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it really becomes fun. So even after we're done talking, we usually stand around for another half an hour or so and answer questions and show you things in the garden that we're really excited about about uh, so you can see all the things that we're passionate about and like see all the things that I'm like oh this one oh this one and I like this one uh, so it's really really fun uh, to get to do that with you all um, and if you haven't signed up for our email list make sure you do that because then you know all the cool things that we have so uh, you don't have to call and keep asking like do we have the Disneyland Rose because you will know the second it comes in you'll get an email about it uh, you'll know about all the really cool programs that we have going on here all the amazing talks and stuff that we have too uh, we put a lot of videos too so we'll talk about strawberries and it'll link to one of my old talks about strawberries so it's a really really cool thing they're beautifully done uh, so make sure you go check that out so thank you so much for tuning in if you have more questions add them down below we'll answer them for you uh, and come by this weekend and check us
us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for our lives on Instagram and on Facebook. All of your butterfly love and friends, tag them down below and let them know what we've got going on. Uh, any neighbors that you know maybe have the wrong colored milkweed, tag them down below so they can come in and get the right one, right? Uh, so we can do what we need to do for those butterflies and fill out one of these things. The butterfly tree is beautiful. It's so pretty. There's so many on there. It's really fun to stand and look at all the things that people have written. Some people paint them. Uh, it's just really a fun thing here. Spring's the best time in Rogers. Uh, so come on by, say hi, be well, and be safe, and happy gardening, everybody. Bye.